Hello, welcome to Dad's Kitchen. Today I am making a subscriber's request. They asked, Deb, can you make us some tortillas? So I'm making you my simple tortilla recipe today. And they may not be around, they might look kind of like some states, because I'm out of practice, but they still taste delicious. Okay, I made these in my test kitchen, and I made a boo-boo, I always use baking powder when you're making tortillas. But I made a snap when I used baking soda. So this time, I got it right. So what we need are simple ingredients. We have flour, all-purpose flour, some baking powder, we have salt, and I'm using fine sea salt, and oil of your choice. I like canola because I don't want it to have any taste, like vegetable or some other olive oil. And we're going to use one cup of hot water. So let's get started. This recipe calls for three cups of all-purpose flour. And if you can see, I have my Mexican style storage container, but it's a good size for a five pound bag of flour, so whatever works. So, we basically want to get three cups of flour, put it in your bowl. Okay, so make sure your cups are topped off. I mean, you're, yeah, evenly topped off. So we have three cups in there. That's what we need. And today I'm using my Pamper Chef stacking measuring spoons. These are so nice because they snap right into place and they fit easily in the in any kind of, you know, when you have a spice um, bottle and sometimes you can't fit the spoon in because they're too wide. These are perfect. And we're going to link them in our description in case you want to order them. Pamper Chef acrylic stacking measurement spoons. They go in the dishwasher and we are going to be using one teaspoon. One teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda. Don't do Deb's mistake. Those of you that follow me on Facebook saw me make those yellow tortillas. So that, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of salt. You can use regular iodized salt. But I and I measure it over because if I get a little salt in here, it really doesn't matter because I actually like more salt, but the recipe calls for one teaspoon. So let's put it in. Mix it up with a whisk because you want to make sure it's all added in. Then it calls for one cup of warmish hot water. So I put it in hot and now it's warm. So I'm putting it in. One cup only. The last ingredient is your oil, and you need one third cup. And I have these, just like those stacking spoons, Pepper Chef Meat makes these nesting, measuring. These are awesome, people. And you don't have to be washing out in between. So we're going to use our cup. See, this one has like hmm, two ounces. Anyway, one third cup of oil. So let me measure that out. And you can do it from the inside and see it. How awesome is that? I'm going to link that too. Put it in. And now, we're going to mix it. Make sure you wash your hands super good because you're using your best kitchen tools today. And we're going to come back. I use start off with one hand because it gets kind of messy. Get your one hand in there. You don't want to get both hands all messy at first because it's really sticky. Look, it's going to be all shaggy. People says, what's shaggy? This is shaggy. See, it looks all shaggy. <laughs> well, you're going to mix it in. And we're going to get all this in. And I just knead it in till it's pretty much incorporated. And then I go in with my other hand. See, this one's all sh messy. And this isn't. I want one hand that's fairly clean. And all you're going to do is mix it till all this flour is incorporated into your dough. And people say, why do my tortillas come out hard? You have to make sure to develop the gluten. So you need to knead it really well. And once you get to the bottom of the bowl, then get on your clean granite. And I just... What if they don't have granite? 
well, <laughs> your countertop. Get on your clean countertop and start mixing that, kneading that dough because we want to make sure all this flour is incorporated. And you see how I'm just going different ways? And then you can use this to pick up your flour from the top. Just keep mixing it. It's going to take about five minutes, folks. And mix, mix, mix. You want to make sure you get all the flour you use. So roll it. Do whatever you need to do. Get it all together. And see now it's getting... You want your masa, which is your dough, to be smooth. You don't want it to be flaky. So you have to keep mixing it till it gets smooth. You see it's starting to get smooth. And, that, and then all the dough comes off your fingers easily. You don't want, if it's sticky, you still need to knead it. Because people say, when I roll my tortillas, they're all sticky. You didn't knead it enough. You need to develop that gluten, folks. So keep kneading until it's nice and smooth. It's going to take about five minutes, and we're almost there. Get a workout in. Get your workout in. See? Smoothing. And you can turn it, whatever it takes. And all you're going to do now, now that it's all smooth into a ball, you're going to let it rest because you gave it a good workout. <laughs> okay, now it's nice and smooth. We're going to put it back in the same bowl. You're going to get a tea towel, cover it. Alexa, set timer for 15 minutes. You're going to let it rest for 15 minutes. Now we're going to be ready to roll. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. My masa has rested. My hands are washed. Because here we go with the hands again. And we're going to lightly flour because we don't want it to stick. But you can see, look. See how soft that is? That's what you're looking for. So I'm just going to give it a couple of a few turns. And then we're going to make the balls. This usually makes about 12. And they're not, they're like snack size, they're not the huge ones. But this is how my mom taught me to measure the balls. To so take your hand, make a C, and you're going to get it in between that C and pinch it off. Whatever her, you pinch off. You turn it, pinch it off, take it to the end of your lollipop, pop goes your heart. Okay, I pinch it off evenly 12. Although this one feels a little bigger, but that doesn't matter. But you do want to make them round because you want to start out with round tortillas or you're going to have maps. And if you see one that has too much, one that doesn't have enough, like this one, add it. And just roll them. You can roll them on your top, whichever is easier for you. Let's start them up like this. Roll them here until you get to all 12. Now I'm going to get a plate. This is what we're going to put our, our tortillas on to keep them soft. And the same tea towel, clean. And it, it's any kind of kitchen towel. Just don't use a bath towel. And we're going to put it on a plate. And when we cook our tortillas, we're going to transfer them over here. So let's get our griddle. Mexican pomal. Any griddle will do. This is a challenging part. Getting it to the right temperature. Usually the first one is a snap loop. First, I put it too high, and then I put it too low, but you want it to be hot enough. So I'm going to put it at probably medium low, so halfway through the low and the heat, because I don't want it to be super hot. Okay, put your flour down, not a whole lot, just to make it dry. You might want to put some on your rolling pin, and this is my old lucky rolling pin. It belonged to my mother. And you want to start by a round one and smash it off. That'll give you a head start to a round tortilla. And like I say, as I go along, I get, they get rounder. But in the beginning, I might have a few maps in Kentucky or whatever. What if you have one of those little smasher things? Those little... If you have one of those smasher, I have one of those silver smashers. They work for me. I have two electric griddles that actually you're supposed to put these balls on. And they're supposed to flatten them and cook them at the same time. Nah. I'm back to the old method, tried and true. And, like I said, make sure you're, we're going to find out. It doesn't feel hot enough. 
I'm going to turn a little up. And you can feel the heat. But if you see smoke coming up, it's too hot, definitely too hot. So let's get back to rolling. Now I roll clockwise. Too heavy. I push it down, too heavy, pushes. Turn it. Too heavy, pushes. Turn it. As it gets bigger, you have to use both hands. And if you see it getting out of shape, you can work with it as <laughs> a square, or you can stretch it. The goal is not, well, yeah, you do want perfect around your kids. The more you make them, the easier it get, they, it just starts happening. The magic happens. <laughs> when you first start, you might get <laughs> a little. And if you want them thicker, I like them thinner. I want to make them as big as I can. And so I kind of stretch it a little. But I keep turning it, that's the key, to try to get them even. And you can fill all you want them. But you don't want them real super thick like Brielle. She makes a pizza crust. <laughs> the bigger you. it how I do it. I already do it. I already know, but I was showing you how to do it. But I go all crazy to get it bigger. Because it'll shrink when you before you put it on. Because it's elastic. The gluten's developed. Now let's take it over. And we will not know until the first tortilla is down whether it needs to be adjusted. And I press it down and that encourages the bubbles. And if you're a experienced tortilla maker, you can turn it with your hands, but if you're not, you can use a... I see the bubbles start to develop. ...spatula, which I use. And it only needs... I know it needs to be a little higher because the bubbles should come right up. So I'm going to turn up my heat a little. And now it's halfway to the halfway mark. So you just got to work with it. See, it's when it's, see how fast that's coming up? That's how it should be coming up. And when you get bubbles, you know you got a good tortilla. And it should get browner, not white. So I'm going to turn it over one more time. And then we're going to make another one. But we're going to try out this one. I'm going to the floor. Get it and you're going to put it on your towel. You're going to cover it up and you're just going to keep making them until all of them are done. So let's come over here and try this tortilla. My brother always says, let me give it the tortilla test. And that means if you can do this, if it folds, then you got a good tortilla. And this one is a little bit harder because if you your griddle's not hot enough, then it will turn into a cracker. And you always want to put some good butter on it. In my house, my mom and we had 12 kids. Sometimes we just had tortillas with butter for breakfast. But no one complained because who doesn't like a delicious tortilla with butter? And she would so you roll it up, and take a bite. to the tools and utensils you saw me using. So you've been a dance kid.